All right, if everybody's ready, I have 5.30. And so we'll call the select board meeting for Wednesday, March 17th, 2021 to order. And the usual reminder is that all votes will be taken via roll call. And uh, this meeting is being recorded. And I forgot to ask John uh, Harrison, are, are we streaming, John? Are we all set? All right, thank you, sir. And then uh, in attendance, we have from the select board, we have Jane Nevin Smith, myself, David Phil, John Muscovitz, Christian Stanley, and Joyce Chunglo. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll roll right into the tri board meeting since everybody looks like they're here. Or are we waiting on anybody? Okay. I think it's okay on our part. I don't know if Valerie's coming or not, but uh, oh, yeah. So, saw... so we have everyone for okay. finance. And Ethan, uh, you and Dr. McKenzie, uh, just, just you two from school? Okay, cool. All right. So I will, um, I guess I'll let Carolyn run with an, a quick introduction and explanation to start with on the budget, and then we'll roll into budget talks. Okay, great. I want to make sure, Linda, are you ready as I just do our little transition here? Yes, yes, okay, I just great. had to re my, right. rename myself, but that's me now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So good evening, everybody. Um, I want to go over the format of the presentation. Our treasurer, Linda Sanderson, will present to you what we estimate to be our revenues for FY22. These figures have been reviewed and analyzed um, by myself, our assessor, the collector, and the treasurer. It's been a great team. And I want to remind you that just as FY21 was unprecedented and unpredictable, we are still in assumption mode um, with some of our anticipated revenue for the next 18 months. What we present tonight is fluid. Each month we will have more updated revenue reports. I will present to you the draft of the fiscal year 22 budget. Linda and I have zoomed together for many hours to ensure that we are providing you with the best estimates for next year. I also wanna add that department heads have done the same. Many have gone back to the table and revised their budgets two, sometimes three times to make changes based on the input that Linda and I gave them um, and made some changes within some budget lines. Linda and I agree that the simplicity um, and efficiency would be our overarching approach to this budget process. This resulted in several line items being consolidated or moved to more appropriate places within the budget. You may have noticed that the budget book is not a part of this presentation right now. We really wanted to focus on a snapshot of FY22. We will be providing the budget book, but we are hoping to consolidate information there as well. Um, and we'll have that ready for you. After Linda is done identifying revenue sources, I will be sharing my perspective on how I approach the budget and why I made the recommendations that I did. It will set a framework, a framework for suggestions I will offer to increase access to services for the Hadley resident. So Hadley, uh, so uh, Linda, do your magic. All right, I am going to share, I hope. Never as easy as it looks. There we go. Are you seeing the revenues? Yes, can you make them bigger? I, that's my next step. I have a paper copy, so I'm good. All right. I can't scroll yours, Joyce, so you're gonna have to keep up. No, I'll try, <laughs> Linda. <laughs> Okay, so um, I did, uh, we did go into a lot of detail with this on finance committee a couple of weeks. It is, the well, finance committee knows it is the same as what we had there. We haven't made changes to it, but I uh, actually met a couple just little things on uh, that based on uh, comments that they made. But I, but I want to explain some differences in how we laid out um, revenues this year. They're in the same categories that David always had, the property tax, the state aid, uh, local receipts, the, those same tables that he had. Um, in order to coordinate better with the other revenue lists that we always have, 
Um, we've added the, I've added those first couple of columns, one so that we know the VEDA or account number that it came from, so that we, we can always double check against and make sure we're using the right figures in our revenue columns. Second is the recap, what we submit to, uh, I think it uh, comes out of assessor's office, I believe, uh, and uh, accountants work with them on submitting the revenues that we are using to uh, support the budget. And uh, if those if those are done at different times, sometimes they don't completely line up. So we have really spent some time making sure we're using the same numbers in all three places this year. And I think that's really going to help us a lot because it can be confusing. So I'll start with uh, table one, the property taxes. Um, the, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, in the way this table is laid out, the green is uh, the cash, the current year that we're in is green. That's where the money that we're taking in and spending right now. Um, in this case, the, the white one, uh, next one, it just shows where we are year to date. You don't need to worry about that, but it just, if you want to eyeball it and see that we seem to be doing okay, we're on track. It just, it's for our purposes as we go forward that we keep, we keep checking back and forth and make sure that we're on track with where we needed to be because it has been such a crazy year. And then uh, the blue column, FY22, I call that our blue skies ahead because things are going to be great in 22 and going ahead. I think we're, we're already seeing signs of a, an upcoming recovery. So that's our blue column. That's the one we're using. And you'll see on the budget ones that will be blue as well. That's our, that's what we're working towards. Okay. So section one is the, um, property taxes. This last year, we, um, you can see we had 12, uh, we, we raised 12, six in real estate taxes. Uh, that was actually slightly lower than the year before. Um, the reason this could have been higher, you see this year we have, we anticipate raising for 22, 13.5 million. Um, the increase there, it's, uh, this is two years of increase because we could have had 13, one or 13 to 13, one million in the real estate uh, property tax this year. And uh, the select board decided to keep the real estate taxes uh, bills down for the taxpayers during the COVID season. And um, just as a reminder, it doesn't mean, uh, although they will see an increase in their this year's bill, we really did increase it because we're using last year's increase to, to, as the basis for this year's increase, which is what was said at town meeting. But I, like, I don't think of it in terms as a huge leap this year. I think of it in terms as we took the leap last year and the town subsidized it for the taxpayers. And now we're going the rest of the way and getting back to where we were. So um, there's, there's that. So that is going to be a large part of the increase that we're going to be able to use for the 22 budget. Next section is state aid as um, uh, we, um, I, I've ran this by uh, finance committee to see if they supported a change in how this was done and they unanim unanimously did. And I think it's much more workable as we're planning for us. It, it is for me anyways. And um, th that's that's what these documents have to be. They have to be something that works for all of us that are, are trying to do the planning. So the state A, those are our cherry sheet figures. In the past, you've seen all of these income figures on the revenue sheet. And then you'd go to the budget is sections to find the deductions against it. Um, we are now using the, uh, we're netting them out because we want the revenue sheet to say, to show you the bottom line of what we have to work with. That's it. So that's going to be the budget. Um, as changes are made to Sherry sheet, we just only need to make it on the revenue page. We don't have to remember to make it in the two places and, 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 and um, explain um, what's happening. I think it'll all be pretty clear. Finance Committee still wanted it set out on the individual lines. So um, there we are. We have, um, so far, we only have the, the first cherry sheet is showing something running a little behind last year's, but we do expect that to increase. That happens every year. We usually end up with three rounds of cherry sheets. Last year, we didn't get the third one until we after we voted the at the special town meeting. The third section is um, local receipts. Um, I don't want to dwell on these and in particular ones because you really, especially if you're looking at the column for uh, where we are to date, many of these receipts are collected at different times of year. Uh, some are all over a two month period at various times during the year. So uh, what we're, we're keeping an eye on that for you, we've got some uh, a, a big revenues still coming in. At this point, we do still expect to take in uh, the amount 
right here. It was uh, the, the green column, what we are, we're using for FY21. We expect to get that in. And um, they, uh, if, if, if you feel insecure about that, looking at the 1.213, I'll tell you um, that we're getting over $200,000 from five colleges as our PVTA assessment. And uh, motor vehicle excise tax bills haven't even gone out yet. And that alone will be seven to 800,000. So between those, you see there's a million. So um, that one, two, we already know is going to be at least two seven and that allow then then there's all the other things that we collect. So we do expect that to be on target. Using where we stood for 20, we went into 2022. 20, um, and when I say we, uh, this, these are the ones as Carolyn said that um, Susan and Dan, um, Susan, uh, uh, Susan Glowatsky and, and Dan Sedonic have a lot of input on that because they've worked a lot with the receipts um, more than I have with the receipts over the years and, and it's been very helpful. So we think that's a really good and conservative. We are, we are not, we have not inflated anything. We, uh, we know better than to do that. But honestly, uh, if you asked any one of us, we probably would say, I think it's going to be a little higher than that, but we're going to start right here. Um, enterprise receipts, those are the amounts uh, that the general fund raise, uh, receives from the enterprise funds that we apply towards the administrative um, uh, charges in town hall. We pay, you know, they, they use the town hall services, collecting, uh, taking the money and paying their bills, um, use of the administrator, HR, others. Uh, uh, so there's calculations for that. We went into that in more detail last year. Um, actually, David figured this for us before he left. So um, we have not revisited that and uh, we're happy that he did this. So bottom line, uh, last year, the general revenues, fund, general fund revenues that we had going into uh, to fund the budget was 16 and a half million. This year, 17 and a half million um, and uh, hopefully more. So that's it on the revenues. That sets the stage for what do we have to work with as we're doing our budgeting? Linda, can I just ask what the Surely. percentage is? I'm not quite sure, like on the lines where it says 4.9 and- Okay, that's the, um, I'll go to the top. Uh, I, um, the uh, That's the change from 21 to 22. So- uh, Okay. Okay, so from from uh, from 21 to, to 22, ignore what's in the middle. So the amount, the dollar amount, 901,000. So, so that's the percentage increase as that okay. went up, this went down. Um, okay. Yeah, so uh, that is ha that has been common throughout the budgets too, but we actually decided when you see the budgets that we're gonna take, we took that percentage out of the budget comparisons because dollars are way more important than seeing something went up 100% when it went from 100 to $200 doesn't really give you a lot of information. Yeah. Um, so, okay. uh, and, and it's always a place for, uh, for inquiry when you see large percentages increase, but it's really the do it's the dollar amount that that that's what we get to spend. We get we spend dollars, not percentages. So I did okay. leave them in here for uh, because it is interesting to see what went up and what down went down. I didn't do it line by line, but yeah. Um, so total, uh, yeah, the total. total, the total for each of these categories of revenue. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So Carolyn, you wanted um, next to go, oh, I was I going to go into page two next? Yep. And is that showing on the screen? Yep. Yes. Okay, all right. Um, I wasn't sure, sometimes I switch and I have to share it again, I don't know. Okay, so um, this is the story of the general fund revenues and how we fund the budgets. Um, uh, we have a similar one. Uh, we have similar information on the enterprise funds, but uh, we're not quite ready on the enterprise enterprise funds. It's something that we will we're uh, we're continuing to work continuing to work through. But you know the the bulk of our work is always in getting this general fund done. So this is getting us off to a great start. Okay, so last year we we uh, limited our our revenues to sixteen and a half million. We came up with a budget of seventeen. 671, 624. That left us with a shortfall of 1,159,532. How do we fund that budget? We funded it uh, besides because we had no more revenues to go to. Uh, as a town, we decided to use 530,000 from the stabilization account. 
and we decided to use free cash in the amount of 752,009. So you can see when I say we, you know, that the town subsidized the uh, the tax increase for for the taxpayers. That's how that's where we subsidized it from. Uh, we subsidized it from from capital accounts that we had. So the uh, other funds that were used were that 1.285 went in. Why do I have a positive balance instead of zero? The reason is um, going back to our, our third cherry sheet came in afterwards, and our, our and they actually. Um, I think it was December they came in and we had our town meeting in November and the cherry sheet actually went up 125,000 after the fact. So that's why we actually have uh, a positive, uh, it's not zero out in 21. Um, so next we have the level funded as, uh, oh, next we have going back to the page that we had before 17,521. Uh, that's the amount from your revenues at the bottom of the page. See, we finished off 17,521. Now we go, whoop, that's our starting point. 17,521,000 for to use in the budget. Uh, this first white column is uh, level fund, second level service. Fourth column, the blue skies ahead is uh, will be um, Carolyn's recommendations. So in the, in the department's... Um, Submissions of level funded budgets. Um, there's there was a, still a shortfall of almost three hundred thousand uh, dollars. The explanation for this is you're not telling Hampshire County Retirement we're refunding we're uh, met, we're level funding them. Um, we have contracts, we have insurance policies, we have a lot of things that the town has to pay, and it's a stepped up increase. And we had to include those stepped up increases. Plus there are union contracts that have requirements for going up. There are various things that made it difficult to level fund the entire budget. But you're going to see in the individual phase that a lot of the department budgets did go down and some went up and you'll, you'll see where those differences are. So how would we fund a $276,000 um, shortfall? Actually, we have, um, uh, we have 330,000, uh, if you look in the next column where we use 333,154, that's the leftover amount. I mean, that's the remaining balance in our certified free cash from last year. We would use 273,000 of that to bring that budget to zero. Now we move into level services. All right, um, because you're gonna see when you start, when you talk to departments, they say, well, I could level fund, but that means the library is not going to be qualified anymore for such and such, uh, you know, their certification requirements or their, you know, what, uh, well, they'll tell you, but th that's true across the board. There's a lot of, um, we can level fund it, but we're going to have to really take some difficult steps. But in order to maintain the services that, that the town has come to expect from our departments, this is what it would take to do it. So using that same, uh, you're going to see the revenue is the same in every case. Uh, the second line is the budget that's it, uh, that is proposed. So the level funded, the level service budget is 18,276,370,000. That leaves a shortfall of 755,000. How do we fund that shortfall? Well, we could throw all of our three ca free cash on it, knowing that we're getting more this June 30th, we'll be certified again. And we can anticipate what some of that free cash is going to be because um, this, this line is called anticipated rollbacks. If you recall, uh, we had um, uh, a, a very large amount from the school. They said they were going to turn back $375,000. They would have cut their budget. But, you know, they are not allowed to cut their budget once, it, once it's been approved, but they said this is what we're going to be returning. We also have some other departments that have pretty large amounts in there um, the actual rollbacks are probably going to be closer to 500,000, including the school and a couple of uh, larger ones from departments. So well, it may well be over 500,000. But in order to fund this level service budget, we only need 418,000 of it, $653. That's our total of other funds being used. We balance that budget, we're at zero. Town administrator, it's interesting because there were ups and downs across... <laughs> There were, there were ups and downs in the budget since we were both kind of surprised to see how close it came into the level services. That's a bottom line amount. That doesn't, uh, it's not a wholesale moving over of the level services budget. So it just happens sometimes. So the explanation is pretty much the same going down 
we, can, we have a three quarter million dollar shortfall. We can fund it with all of the free cash. And we can fund it with uh, roll packs that we're expecting to get back. So before you say, which I know David Phil is going to say, we're going to pay back stabilization account, remember? And uh, yes, we do remember. We can't do it in this. We can't do it yet. We actually can't do it until the fall because we'll, we'll have a, we have, we need our free cash to be certified again. Even the, uh, when I, when I say anticipated rollbacks, even that we can't use quite yet. That, that depends on a fall town meeting where those rollbacks from the departments go into the free cash state certifies them. And then we can tap into it to fund this very budget. So, um, there is not a way where we can actually walk out the door at the annual town meeting with the with these two budgets, the two second ones balanced, unless if there's an interest in not having the fall town meeting, unless we use stabilization, which we have access to. So um, if if you didn't want to go back and take care of it in the fall, we would move, we would take that 418,000 in both those cases out of the stabilization line again, and then we would be good to go. There's going to be a lot of stress for. Um, there's a lot of people don't want taking out, they want to see the money go back into stabilization, not come out. But That's again, more. we have to tidy this up in the fall. We just can't do it right now. And we have other funding sources too, that um, I'll, I'll let Carolyn go on uh, some other options there. But without getting any details, now you see what the big picture is. What have we got? What are the budgets? How are we going to get there? So you don't have to worry as we go through the budget about how we're going to pay for this. Linda, but Linda I had a question. I do too. Go ahead, Stephen. Hi. Uh, my question was on the 125A49, it was yeah. we left over. Where did we put that? Does that just go into our free cash or yes. automatically? Okay. Yes. So so would it, when I look at that number, the 752, it goes to free cash or stabilization? Um, I'm not 752. Help, help. Where's that? Well, the seven, uh, the free cash in that, in that, Oh, up, to, up there. Voted. Okay. Well, so remember, would we offset it against that, or um, maybe when we also don't know that we're actually going to collect the sixteen five. Okay. At the top. Right. So, right. put so even though they're set out separately at this point, you put it all into a big pot of what we've got to spend. Uh, our revenue actually might be higher than that, and the budgets might come in lower than that. But whatever the difference is between the uh, between the revenues and the and uh, the actual expenditures actual revenues less actual expenditures yep. from the year, that entire amount goes into free cash reg regardless of the source. Okay, so so in the end, if, if let's assume that this column is the way things end up, okay, when we, when, right? We would then be able to say, okay, we didn't use 752, we we use that less the 125.8, so a little bit less out of the stabilization. Or rather, the 530 out of the stabilization matter. I'm sorry. That, that that's an option. We actually okay. can't change the amount that came out of, comes out of stabilization um, without going to town meeting, and that can be done. Okay. That can be done. If we were to get, uh, let's say, the uh, revenues, uh, we just got it went over 17 million this year. We hadn't planned yep. on it. We actually uh, could then say we don't want to take any of the money out of stabilization. Right. So that'll we, be. A, we may be in a good position if things go that way. We can. We can take advantage of that. Right. But okay. so what we would do is we would do, we could take care of it. We don't have to wait till fall. We can take care of it at the annual town meeting. We can still make an adjustment and Please. say, we don't okay. want to, we're going to fund it completely out of the um, the revenues and nothing is going to come out of stabilization. So that's a way of, if that happened and there's, there's, that's a possibility um, that we would um, not have anything to repay to the stabilization in the fall because we will have not taken it out in the first place. We have talked about that. Yeah, okay. that was my question also, oh. Linda, what, what was happening to the 125. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I just have a question on uh, the, so we would be going from, the, I basically calculated the increase in revenue at about from the tax levy at about a little over 7%, the property tax levy, that growth in revenue is 7%. So I don't quite get that with proposition two and a half. How do we go from 
how do we get that 7% increase in revenue on that line? Is Dan on? Yeah, I, I can handle that. <laughs> uh, the prop two and a half, the two and a half percent is how much we can take in additional from the prior year's levy limit. If you go back to that, that sheet. Yeah. Uh, our levy limit last year was actually just over 13 one. We only raised 12.6. So there's 500,000 in there of the 901 that is, we would have raised this year, but we didn't. Two and a half allows us to raise that in future years, even if we didn't do it in fiscal 21. Okay. So the two and a half percent, if you look, it's the 301, 930. And then the 100,000 is what we're estimating for new growth, for new construction. So our new levy is only going to be about $402,000 higher than it was this year, the levy limit. But because we didn't raise the 500,000 from last year, we'll have just over 901 for next uh -huh. year. Uh -huh. So, so I guess my question is, will people see that increase on their taxes? Because you know that will raise raise uh, as a town meeting. So how do we? The the seven percent is not the actual increase. Right. It'll be it'll be close to that because the hundred thousand is we're also adding value for that hundred thousand for the growth. So it would actually be eight hundred one versus the twelve twelve six. Right. So that works out to uh, about 6.3. And, and, and debt exclusions, Dan, they're not part of the, you, uh, you don't, we don't use that towards a percentage of increase. That well, just that, is what it is. Yeah, right? those numbers aren't going to change so, from year to year for the yeah. most part. So these are standalone figures, the 100,000 and the 1030577. When you've done your percentage increase, those are simply added on as, as additional items. So, in, in all, Dan, when you do your um, calculations, um, did you figure out how much that would be per household or um, we haven't at, come to that level At this yet. point, no, but if we do a 6% increase on what the, was this year, it'd be about 250 bucks for the average. Per it's, household. It's pretty close to what we said it would be last year when uh -huh. we, we talked about it for fall town meeting. Okay, and we didn't increase it then, so this is the year that we would have to see some type of increase come in. Right, half of that would have been last year. Okay. We would yep. have gone up 125 last year and 125 this year. Yep, okay, exactly. Thanks, Dan. So if you level fund and you raise it 2.5%, what does that figure? If, if you're, uh, if we level, if we use a level funded budget, you're saying, yeah. Yeah. and if we, and if we don't go the full, uh, if we, uh, we continue to lag a year behind in our ability to raise taxes, like we did last year, you're, is that what you're saying when you say only go up the two and a half and not the two and a half twice? Is that what you're asking? Yes. About 500,000, Dan? So that's the difference between your level service and your level fund. I see what you guys are doing. I see what you come up with. We're doing it very openly, John. I know. I understand. Okay. Just want everybody to understand what's okay. going on. It, it would be about 415000 okay. give or take. So you're talking $125 or something like that for an average household, Dan? Yeah, that would be about 125 at that point. Well, and then too, I mean, I just remember from last year, it's like, is this last year we had a change in value. So like your taxes could go up or down depending on where your house was assessed. So I don't know how much, probably it's an overall increase this year, but there might be some plus or minus depending on assessed value. Uh, initial evaluation of the numbers, the sales from 2020 looks like everything's going up residentially but they're all going to go up about almost a, about the same. So it's going to have no impact on taxes. There was a big spike due to COVID in, in sales prices. Uh -huh. Yeah. They went like hotcakes, didn't they? Yep. 
except for that one building in North Hadley. <laughs> it's all relative. Right, I was happy with that <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy, Lordy. Is that good? I just want to say too, I, I'm sorry, I have like two screens. So like everybody's on one side and I'm looking at the other side, but um, so I don't know where I'm talking or where I'm looking, but I really like this budget presentation. It's really nice to be able to look at all the numbers on one page and um, be able to kind of get that summary view that's clear and concise. I know it's, it's complicated, but you guys did a really nice job of presenting it. So I just wanted to Good. say that. Good. I, as, um, Good. I'm, I'm glad it works for you because it, it, if there's anything that doesn't make sense, as you saw, Christian, when you said you didn't like the way state aid one year was on that other report that we changed the way we did it. I went back and changed the prior year and made it conform to the current year. So if there's something that doesn't make sense and you want to see differently, this is a this is a moving document. You all can say when something isn't clear. Um, it's it's fine. We can we can help clarify. But um, it is, it is, it's funny because how long t simplifying takes, as I said to Carolyn once, but one of my favorite quotes is if I had, um, if I had more time, I'd write a shorter letter. And um, it takes, it takes a longer time to make things shorter or so, but the work's done and we, we've got this to move forward in. And I hope that it, it, it needs to work for us. So um, feel, free great, to give, feel free to give input. Great presentation, Linda. And it's very quite clear. Thank you. Great. I think it, it's much easier to understand having it on two pages instead of on many more multiple pages mm -hmm. having it against each other as opposed to looking in one column and chasing around to find where your opposite of that is. It's very nice. Thank you for okay. all the time you spent on it. Okay. As we uh, get further along in this process, the only thing I would, I would ask is maybe on this sheet here is if at the bottom of each column, you know, for level funded, level service and town admin, if we could put, uh, an, uh, you know, some projections of how much of an increase, you know, the average home would see based on each of those, those budgets. And if we were to, you know, raise uh, the, the taxes two and a half percent or 5% or set, whatever, you know, the limits allow, just put a, a range there so people can kind of compare the options. So that way they, they see what we're looking at. And Paul, you have um, we'll, we'll, we'll think on that because I think, you know, something where people need, can figure out themselves is a, is a good way to have it rather than say all this, if, 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 but just say, basically you take this, this amount, a hundred thousand, you know, like we'll talk about it, but that's good. To, that's, that's helpful too. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to suggest that you actually just do if your house is, you know, two hundred thousand, two fifty, three hundred, three fifty. Do it in fifty thousand or twenty five thousand yeah. dollar increments. This is your approximate tax, you know, and and that way, because you know people always say the average amount, and mm -hmm. not everybody's living in the average house. Okay. So you know, I think people really need to be prepared because even people living in houses that are a little above the average, slightly above the average, maybe need to think very hard about these things, you know, and, or prepare for an impact. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I think that would just be in, in being clear to the, to the voters. Yep. I, yeah. I think towards, towards the end of the, yeah. Okay. We will talk about it here. Kind of like one of those tipping easy. cards they give people, you know, <laughs> I just wanted to point out too. I mean, the difference between level fund and level service, we're talking not even $300,000 or, you know, less than 2% of the, <clears throat> 2% difference. So, I mean, it's not like going to that level of service, which I think would be much easier as far as pain on the town, trying to, like you were saying about all the trickle down effects of trying to level fund. We're not talking a whole lot of difference, um, but I know, you know, a little bit is a lot. So, um, but still just, it's less than 2%. So when we're thinking about it, so even for a level funded budget, you're still going to have an increase in your taxes. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's an, an important thing to get across to people watching at home is there will be an increase. It's a matter of how much uh, we, we tapped and, and, you know, I'll go out on a limb here and I'll say that I'm, I'm sure we all are not going to favor tapping stabilization again. That was a one-time thing that we did in an emergency. And, mm -hmm. We, we pledged that, you know, 
we would replenish that as much as possible. And I'm sticking to that. And I'd like to see us put back as much as possible back into stabilization. So that way that when the next emergency rolls around, we have that, you know, in reserve. And so there, there will be an increase. It's not going to be like last year, but you know, it remains to be seen how much. Yeah. I'm going to take that extra money out of OPEB too, didn't we? We, we didn't we did. put it, we didn't put it in. Yeah, we didn't put it in to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. We uh we it was in twenty one. It it was not it's not in wait a minute. It's not in the level funded budget. We did take it out from twenty one. I'm sorry. It was out. It's not in the level funded, but actually it is in the in the level service. So it's yeah. it's things like that that we really need to consider the value of um so that is part of that's about a, about a third of that different of that uh, shortfall there is OPEB. Mm -hmm. um, needs, you know, needs, needs to be done. I mean, so um, we'd have to make different plans uh, entirely if we're going to go with po OPEB and cut other budgets. I mean, to, to cut budgets 260,000, you can wipe out two t uh, multiple town hall departments with that amount of money. Um, uh, it's well, well, I'll, leave that to, I'll leave that to you. <laughs> You're the select board. Well, it's a fluid. It's a fluid thing, Linda. We're not going to dismantle our budgets. Yeah. But if we can put some money into each one of those, it may not be exactly the whole amount. Yeah. But at least we could do something. And so and to, to and to be honest, just I'm just. To be honest, we have we and you know we've put a good amount into OPEB. Mm -hmm. But what you yeah. what you don't know is this has been a great year well you might with your own investments it's been a good year for investments so mm -hmm. actually our OPEB has grown as much this year as if we did make the contribution in another year so right. we are still it's still rising and we did not come to a grinding halt for not making the contribution but mm -hmm. if we've been able to make the contribution we would be that much more ahead of the game and the sooner we get that cleaned up and the, we'll have it uh, have it available and it will come off the budget at some point but that's a that's a long range plan so, yeah, I think uh, at, at some point in another me meeting, as our budget meetings go along, if you can share with us the amounts that are in each one of these uh, budgets, enterprises, things like that, mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, one of the things that we could look at uh, and where we are, and where we want to go with how much we could um, right. put into these this year, if that's possible. Right. And if it's, and if it's in October, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, um, doesn't have to be May. And, you know, whether or not people don't want to do a fall town meeting, I think if it's to put money back where it belongs and we get money from the state, then those are the things that we look at. Nothing is set in stone. Right. Right. And I, I think we just, we have to be very flexible. We, I think this yep. is, we, we have to think of this as our starting point. And I think it's, I think it's a very solid starting point. Um, yeah. but, um, and we, we know the pieces that are going to move and we know how to make adjustments if, you know, yep. as, as we go along, but yeah, this is a great start. Thank you to you and all the financial team. Uh, Carolyn, it's, it's a, a really good way to start off the budget process. Thank you. Yeah. And I think she's going to go on now. And since I started with the details on the revenues and then went into general on budget, she's now ready to go and, uh, and talk some more about the budget. Okay, so I am going to uh, give you a little bit of a non-traditional transition to the budget. Uh, so if, you're, you're, if you'll bear with me, I'm actually gonna start off what, about my commute. So twice a day during the week, I recognize how thankful I am to have such a beautiful commute to work. I'll confess that Hakanum Village is my favorite part of the commute. In the morning, Barstow's is on my right, and in the evening, Mitch's Marina is on my right. Both views are breathtaking. Hadley is naturally beautiful, but that beauty has been maintained and fortified by its inhabitants, inhabitants, its farmers, its business people, and who I'm gonna focus on tonight, Hadley's public servants, your employees. They make up the majority of the budget, but they are the value behind the dollars. They serve the citizens, they uphold laws and regulations, ensure that residents are safe, they improve infrastructure, they provide services to the vulnerable, maintain the financial status of the town, 
and countless other critical services. The reason I started this with this beginning is because it's important that you know that I can't present just a budget with numbers on an Excel sheet. It is more than monetary value. During the interviews that I had when I applied for the position of town administrator, I shared my management style. My emphasis was on relationships within the community and with the employees and volunteers. My core value that I committed to bring to Hadley was development, retention, recruitment, and recognition for Hadley's employees. It's this core value that is behind the numbers that I will be recommending. I want to emphasize that a public employee is not working for a bottom line, as you know. So motivation to provide, to provide excellent service from Hadley employees is not just money. If that were the only reason, you would not have the longevity of employees that you have now. What I have observed is motivation to serve the residents, the business owners, and each other. I'm not sure if you're aware that over 50% of Hadley employees live in Hadley. What I've also observed is that Hadley has extremely highly skilled and devoted employees that in my experience is not typical in smaller towns. Highly skilled municipal employees often move on to higher paying communities. You have stakeholders working for you. What I have also observed is that when recruiting for new hires recently, it's been difficult to recruit talented candidates because of the pay scale. Because of this, we have to hire our newest hires at a higher pay scale, and they're making very close to what employees who have worked here for several years are getting now. COVID may have required the reduction of staff presence, but not staff workload. In fact, consistently I've seen across the departments, COVID has created more work in providing services to the residents. This has been done without grumbling or complaining from any of your employees. Hadley employees have risen to the challenges unexpectedly placed before them by this pandemic, just like all of us. They have been creative and proactive. Most impressively, they've worked collaboratively together and provided an incredible amount of support to me during these last several months. When you meet with each department during the hearings, I've asked each of them to explain what some of those challenges have been and how they overcame them, all with the intent of helping the residents. The non-union workforce does need a salary schedule that will reward them for their years of service and experience. Each year, Hadley employees' wages fall further and further behind. Step increases are not in this budget and have not been in previous years for non-union employees. So I just wanna reiterate, I have not put the step increases in. Um, we really haven't adopted that or followed it for non-union employees but I will recommend that a COLA increase of 1.5% be given to non-union employees. All of our collective bargaining units are presently in negotiations, so I don't have any numbers for those employees. You will also see when you meet with departments individually that a few will have an increase from 35 hours weekly to 37.5. I'm recommending that the town hall open earlier than nine. This will ensure that the offices are open during that time. Many residents have to go to work late if they want to do business in the town hall. So I just wanna remind you, this is a draft submission. Numbers will become more precise as revenue reports come in and revised cherry sheets are posted just like Linda hinted at. So I just, as, I, as we, um, Linda brings up uh, the budget right now, I just want you to know that as you look on that, there's gonna be a blue um, column that is, my rec is the town administrator's recommendation to the finance committee and the select board. Um, most of that does include a 1.5% increase. So I just wanted to let you know about that ahead of time. And um, we'll just go through it. David, I'm not sure how you wanna walk through this. Do you have any preference? No, I mean, this is just an overview at this point, right? So however you think is best and uh, just so the select board knows the usual detailed um, line by line info will be coming you know, to the finance committee as well. Right. And I think, um, again, I want to thank Linda because uh, it was great that we, we are still using David Nixon's, some of his um, worksheets that were really helpful. Um, but she was so on board with trying to simplify how to present this to you and the public so that they would understand it. 
um, and she gets really excited as she explains the layout. So um, Linda, did you want to do that? I'm having trouble getting my, uh, finding where my audio, my uh, video is. I don't know why I can't see myself. Hmm. Can you see me? We see your name. Well, I'm just going to talk then because I don't know what happened. I lost one of these screens. Oh, you know what? I, I hear Jennifer's I... door open, so she's probably going to run over there in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, we're, seeing Linda, we're seeing your screen. That's why we okay. don't Okay, that's important. I don't know you. I guess you're not going to get both then, as long as you can hear that's me. That's correct. Okay. So here's here's the screen. Okay, here's a repeat of what we were doing. Uh, green, uh, where we are now. Um, I'm told I'm moving my mouse a lot, so I'll stop fidgeting. Um, so the tw the 21 column is the green one, uh, where we uh, the, the year that we're in right now. Um, and uh, the blue one, our blue skies ahead budget for Carolyn is the I column I uh, FY22 administrative. Uh, recommendations and then in between they have the level funded and the level services just exactly what I set out the, in the format we set out in summary form so um, yes this was Dave, David uh, Nixon had it set up in this uh, these sections like series one is the government series two public safety and and three so you you want to how about I put up one section at a time Carolyn and you want to you know just sure run down anything and I don't know if you want to go one by one, we can kind of show where there were in the gray, um, we explained why you would see a such a big difference, whether up or down. Um, we did consolidate some line items such as legal. Um, I'm definitely a keep it simple, stupid. So we, we really work towards kind of less work for the employees as far as billing and deciding who gets what bill. Um, we can, we are still separated when we get the invoices. So we know what charges have been brought back to each department. Um, but we can just report that, um, in an easier way. And it just makes sense to just do it in one light item for certain items. Can you just show us what the changes are between 21 and 22? I mean, instead of yep. going through everything, you can take uh, 100 general and go through there and between the bottom lines. Down the uh, the far column. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I was I was going to do uh, I was actually going to work on a listing of it, but I do think I know most. Is that a question, John? Yeah. Is there? A, can you email me this? Absolute, absolute, absolutely. All right. Um. It's in the board docs too, John. You see it there? Uh, I don't want my whole email thing to come up on the screen. Let me see if I can do it on. I don't. I, I didn't. I didn't see them board docs. They said they were going to send it to us, but they must have just sent it then. Yeah. yeah I, but it's we not, got into heads down mode and and forgot some of the uh, at our of some of our etiquettes here. We're just so con I was yeah. just checking numbers and stuff. Because I got on Zoom and Outlook, so I don't. My I didn't open the board docs up right now. I can have a copy for you, John, here as well, if you want. I did print some copies here. Um, uh, um, for time's sake, why don't we just hit some of the, uh, Carolyn, the, the line or the account numbers that you had merged and kind of explain mm -hmm. why some of those were merged. And then, you know, maybe some of the, the big increases that might draw attention at this point, And then we can delve into detail in, in future meetings. Sure. Um, so if you see town administrator, that was in a separate budget. And it just made sense since I work for you um, to put it into um, under the select board merged into 122. So that, that's where you see that number is now in 122. And then insurance and property liability, that again, that was its own budget as well, I think. Is that right, Linda? I was just an, um, I'm sorry, I was doing sending it up for John. What's that again? The, <laughs> the uh, insurance and property that was in its own budget, yes. wasn't it? Yes. For some reason, we uh, yeah uh, we have all of the town building operations are uh, in a single budget. Um, electricity, heat, gas. Um, they are they're set out by lines, but uh, here they're in a single budget. It's basically all the costs of running the buildings. Um, exclusive, uh, not counting the building maintenance budget, which is another one, but these are the, the, the bills we get in, utilities mostly. So instead of having that set up as a, as a single item budget of its own, we just merged it right in. So when we merged, I left the FY21 as it was, 
And then for level funding, you say, Voop, I add them together right here. That's the combination so that, you know, you won't, so that it's clear that we're just, we are using the same amounts. So that was, so those are the two big ones there. Did, did you, you explain the town administrator one and the big yep. change? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And that involved David for uh, Nixon for half the year. So a lot went on there. Yeah. I don't think there's any other. Not in that one. Not, no other big ones. Um, there has been some back and forth with the town building operations between some departments that did pay those bills. And we've been trying to bring them all under one shelter because if you don't pay your electricity or your phone, it, you get cut off. And we thought, it, and so sometimes some these bills sit in, in the inboxes. We really thought it was better if all of those invoices for the buildings come to town hall, stay in town hall. Jennifer corrals them all and pays them all under the town hall budget and, and let the department heads move on with their other business. Um, Next. Okay, there it goes, John. John uh, Weshkevitz. I sent it to the at, the at Hadley Mass one for you. Is that what you want? Hopefully. Well, here's. Um, I don't see it, uh, but yeah, I, I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah, I just got it. Okay, I heard you. I heard you bling. Um, okay, so uh, public safety, Carolyn. Yeah, we just we again we're merging. If it makes sense, so we merged gas inspections and plumbing into two, well, 241. Yeah, which is the inspections. inspections. Yeah. So we added those all up into there. Um, and uh, there is a, there is another inspection. Should I mention the electrical yeah. one here? Um, okay. Yeah. We do have another inspector. Um, for some reason that has been set up entirely separately. Electrical inspection fees go into the revolving fund. The revolving fund pays the inspector out of that budget. In the end of the year, we swipe the uh, any balance back into the budget. So what you're seeing is we have um, probably $15,000, $20,000 of revenue from that, from that source each year, which never shows up on the revenue column and the extents never shows up in the budget. We're going to bring them back, at, back under the uh, general fund um, uh, umbrella here. And in order to do that, there will probably be a, an article on Springtown Meeting to uh, get rid of that revolving fund. Okay. That will increase our revenues. <laughs> yeah, so isn't that supposed to be building, plumbing and electrical? The revolving fund? Nope, that's just electrical. Yeah, but all the inspectors went into one, when it emerged, emerged all the inspectors into one. Yeah. They, but they weren't revolving funds. They were separate. Uh, they were separate little uh, sources of revenue. You see, they're not big. It's hard to spend. I mean, they're good. We want them, but it, it doesn't mean a lot for you to see forty three hundred or seventy two hundred. This yeah. big figure up here is what means something. We're trying to get focused. Okay. All right, I'll get focused, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> It oh, took me a while. <laughs> trying. Yeah, if you're just talking about 4,300 and 7,200, and you're going to put it all under the general budget at 162,474. Correct. Or, That's or, a, or whatever. That is a level funded budget, there is the 162,474. Yes. Correct. It's taken me 18 years to get focused here. Let's go. <laughs> We'll help anytime. Just Thank call. <laughs> <laughs> I know you will. Thanks. So you just want to go down to anything that had major changes? Yeah, I think that's good until people have a chance to look at this for the next meeting. Good. And we say thank you to how to this good portion of the budget here that the select uh, the school has has leveled. And I think um, Annie's here, so thank you, Annie. Yes, thank you very much. I, I don't think she's promising to return 375000 this year, though. <laughs> so, uh, public works, uh, uh, you're going to see some increases in the building maintenance. That's, again, um, that's pulling from multiple departments that were paying those bills. C Carolyn, um, oh, wait a minute, let me get focused. 
that's into that's I was I was thinking 190, but still um, custodial being broken up. Uh, that's custodial interior maintenance and exterior maintenance. Um, so there have been in some increases there as it was pulled from other uh, apartments and um, and we have new buildings. So it's all so it's it's both factors. So don't be saying that it's 20,000 more for the new buildings. That's just a part of it. And when we go into the detail budgets, you'll that you'll you can see exactly where some things came from. Okay. Good. Probably Next section. Maybe 20,000 for the new buildings cuz we've got to maintain them. We're it, not paying 20,000, John. Yeah. Did you hear what she said? It's a factor, but we also pulled from other areas. We're not intending to hide that from you or in any way. This is just a summary budget. It will come out in the individual mm -hmm. hearings. You'll, when we go through that budget, it'll be really clear where all those came from. I have line items of where, where the monies came from, were moved from. You, you don't want, uh, yeah. It's because it's all, it's all run out of uh, DPW now. Yeah. So we Thanks. don't have, the library people don't make their own arrangements for, for painting or repairs. And so it's all run in one place. It's, it is more efficient. It helps, helps the department heads focus on, their focus too, John, jo Joyce, um, it helps them focus on, on, on their business and, not, yeah. and, and ma make sure taking care of the building is run by the people who that's their business. So. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. Anything to focus on? Um, no, I think we're yeah. looking at maybe you will add on the back page about benefits, and I see that OPEB does have. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, right, yeah. Uh, debt and interest is just a swing there. We always like to see principal. No, yeah. Oh, principal went down. Uh, of yep. the portion we kept the payments the same because we have a lot more that we're paying off now but once again we're seeing a very very even in fact it came it, very even uh principal and debt yeah all of our buildings pay uh, have been finest and are in there and will not cause any further increase great great benefits retirement it it goes up there you have it. Mm -hmm. um, insurance, health insurance, it goes up too, but it didn't. Awesome. Wow. wow. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Oh, that's the first time I've seen that in a long time. I don't think I have. Yeah. I think there might be some subsidizing going on there uh, for all uh, having, having insurance uh, companies, uh, health insurance, Joyce benefited from uh, some COVID relief of their own and maybe they're passing it along. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's what I we think. Always, we always had like a 10 or something yeah. like that percent increase each year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. It's usually been, yeah, seven to 8%, at least sometimes a little bit higher. But, yeah. but I do think this is not, I can't think of an example right now, but we have seen instances of, uh, of COVID relief being passed along to us. Mm -hmm. um, I think that in our other insurances, Right in the middle of uh, right in the middle of the year, they decreased the premiums. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, it's it's no, been great. Yes. So the other big change here is the OPEB, as Joyce pointed out, um, it said level service. So I threw it back in, and and there it is. But yeah, yeah we we know yeah. we know that's the first one to get picked on. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't ask for it, and we shouldn't take it seriously. No, it might be something that we can do even in the fall to put some money back into that. So you might know. Be. Yeah, I think this is just a you know, like preliminary and gives us an idea, and then we'll look forward to it between May and October. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And this uh, at the bottom, you see your total budget, which is the one from your summary page that we saw. Mm -hmm. the, the, you'll, you'll see in these three pages that they just line right up. Um, yeah. In the um, and this also will show you. Uh, it's the same as what you. Uh, the increase in each of these from the prior year. So mm -hmm. I think that that's over 17.6, the amount increasing over there, the amount increasing over to that, from over that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. This was easy to read and easy to do. Thank you so much. And again, they, the dollar differences are over here, but as I said before, 
Uh -huh. all, all those uh, all those percentage increases did was give us a headache. Yeah. <laughs> and, and people were looking at the wrong things. They weren't seeing yeah. the big items. They were just seeing the big percentage increases and they weren't the same. No, no. That's what I was wondering when I saw it. So thank you. Great. I just right. have uh, two, two questions or comments. My first one is going to be a little bit easier is, um, and well, actually I'll go with the second one first. So um, I think we should definitely be looking at our series 100 general government and um, getting our salaries for all our town employees in line with um, what would be expected if we had to hire someone new or for their terms of service. I really think we need to get all that on track. And part of me is even like, hey, if we had a really good year with OPEB, why don't we kind of take that money uh, and use what's there as a way to somehow finance uh, increasing our town employees salary and making them where they should be. Um, but I doubt I would get that if I tried to propose something like that right now. But I think we should definitely put together a path toward achieving um, those salaries. We did it with the police department, um, I think two, two years ago. Um, and I think we can do it with our town employees and the police department is getting into a range where officer salaries is kind of what is in the area for officer salary to retain people. Um, so that's kind of my first comment. The second one is a tangent from the budget, but it does, uh, is always part of it every year is the capital portion of the budget. And typically I know Amy and myself, um, uh, Paul from the school committee will meet and do the capital plan. I don't know if I want to relinquish that role this year, since I won't be on the select board when town meeting comes along if someone else wants to do that, but also just if we want to uh, um, schedule those meetings at some time. Usually David Nixon would kind of spearhead a lot of that, so I just right. don't know if it's on the radar or not, but happy to be involved or happy to pass the torch to someone else if they want to do that. You're still yeah. here. We're going to keep you working until you're <laughs> Christian, I just wanted to get past today, <laughs> so the capital... <laughs> It's on yeah, my yeah, mind. No, no, it's sure. just something I haven't even <laughs> talked about. So I just, it's in the back of my mind, like, oh no, we didn't meet that. Are we on schedule? And I don't even know what the schedule is. It's, so it's just yeah, something. It's usually April, about I think. March or April. So yeah, I hear you. I, I support what Christian says about getting our staff up to speed on salaries. And I know we've had at least one in the last year I sat through listening to a presentation of a comparison of our salaries to everybody else's in the area. So we have bases to work from. I know in the past there have been other studies. I don't think they've ever been applied to town employees. So I think it's about time before we lose good employees. I don't think anybody's going anywhere, Jane. I think it's just being uh, an equality um, employer. I think that we need to work on this policy handbook um, that we did many years ago. And we also need to do a wage study and see what we need to do to bring people up to par, which is part of the policy um, uh, public handbook that we use for personnel handbook. So that all wraps up into the same thing that we're all talking about tonight. Um, and is getting that done and making sure that everybody is on equal par with um, our surrounding towns and making sure they're getting the right compensation that they need. Um, long overdue, um, I can't tell you, I don't know, my 18 years are running all together right now. Let me tell you what I'm trying to think about um, the things that we did in the past. And uh, I think Joan Zusko and other people were on that committee when we did the uh, policy handbook. Um, we did do a wage study at the time, but you know, that was several years ago and uh, everything all, always needs to be updated. And um, somehow that always gets, somehow things get lost in the shuffle when we're, when we're doing so many other things. So, you know, again, that's one of the things that we need to look at. 
I totally agree. And I know that last year the wage study was done because I remember we paid $50,000 to have someone else do it. So yeah. we have a current one, basically, and we need to do something with it. I agree. And the employee handbook should definitely be updated. You know what that means, Joyce? It means more select board meetings. <laughs> Well, I think we usually do private meetings on the policy handbook, uh, personnel policy, and then you go from there and present it to the select board. So that's one of the things I did see a memo out from Ed uh, to get that thing up and running again. So, uh, you know, another good thing that we need to work on. So if uh, Linda and Carolyn, if you don't have anything else, I'd like to open it up to the finance committee and the, the schools that, that are here and see if you guys have any comments or inputs or, or anything, you know, that you want to mention on this initial overview. I'll say that um, I like the layout um, on both the revenue side and the expense side. I like the, how it's simple. Um, it's the first time seeing the expense side uh, I'd like, you know, I don't really have any questions right now. I did see a lot of line items, but I would have more questions, but line item by line item, I'd like to take it, you know, that I won't do that here. Um, so being the first time I've seen it, and then it'll be more interesting to see once, um, the rest of the book, because then it'll explain, um, probably the increases of those or decreases of those line items a little bit more, um, so, I, I mean, I think it's a good start, um, but I'd like to see the difference. So, in some of the items, I see where there's um, from the level funded or the level um, funded versus the level service, I see the little bit of a jump. Um, I do understand that there's the 1.5% increase, but the jump in some of them is more than the 1.5 increase. So, I'd be interested to see what else that is entailed in that. But I think that'll be more detailed um, as it comes. Yeah. Amy, wasn't that because just in looking at the overview is that some of those positions have uh, been suggested to go to 35 to 37 and a half. And I think that that's where you might see the increase, not just 1.5, but the 37 and a half hours instead of 35 hours a week. Now that 37 and a half, versus the 35, is that a, a done thing or is that just something that has started to be discussed or is that something that you guys have voted upon um, having that uh, longer day at Town Hall? That's the first yeah, time they've heard of it from me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure, I'll jump in if that's all right. Uh, yeah. One, uh, I there isn't... Uh, lot to describe on the school side. We were able to do a level funding for local contribution. The total school department budget will increase next year, but we uh, will rely more heavily on school choice funds in terms of trying to take care of what we need to take care of on our end. And, um, and I'm grateful that we could hopefully make it possible for the town to make the investments that it is talking about making in terms of whether that's in its employees and services. Um, so anything that we can do to help that along, we're glad to do it. And I just want to uh, really say how impressed I was with that presentation. It was fantastic. Carolyn, uh, it's hard to believe that this is your first budget presentation as a town administrator. And Linda and Dan and Susan, I know that you all worked very hard on that. Dan, I don't know anybody who can explain taxation as clearly as you can and succinctly. So thank you for that. And Linda, I'm gonna seal that, get rid of those percentages, because you're right, you spend all your time talking to people about 1800 bucks that represents 30% and say, what, is this my life? Enjoy some with you. It's taken me 18 years to learn how to get focused too. So you guys did an awesome job. It's a wonderful presentation and i um, glad that uh, we could, uh, the biggest expenditure in town, I'm, I'm happy that we could uh, request level funding from the town. Can I just, can I just take a moment while you're on Annie to thank you for uh, navigating our school system and the school committee um, through this COVID year that we have had to um, 
antagonize over at some point, but I think our school department has done a fantastic job in bringing our kids back and forth and making, having them be able to uh, come back to the classrooms as quickly as we did. And um, just doing an overall great job in taking care of our, our students. So I just want to say thank you to the school department and teachers and everybody for doing the job that they do. It's been awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. And you underscored the right teachers, faculty, staff, all of the staff. I say, I appreciate your um, compliments. I'm not being falsely self-deprecating. When somebody, uh, you read, I said this the other day, when you read Nelson Mandela's biography, nobody says, man, that guy had a great biographer. So it's the people like I'm the biographer, right? I just, yes. the people on the ground are doing all the work. And um, that's the teachers, the faculty, the staff, school committee, um, and our principals. So thanks for pointing that out. They really have done an amazing job this year. And I'm, I'm just proud to work with them. Thanks for that, Joyce. You're welcome. It's a total team effort. Thank you. Any other comments from uh, Ethan? Anybody else? Uh, Finance committee? Yeah. All right. So we are getting short on time for our projected uh, uh, town annual town meeting here. So the path forward from this point, um, it sounds like the key decision we're going to have to make is whether we want a level fund or a level service. And then from that point, that's probably where we're going to need to meet with department heads to have them, you know, plead their case for whatever changes had to be made to the budget. I, I don't want to see every single department head coming in front of us and going line by line through the budget like we did in the, in the past at times. And it just took a lot of time and we can read the book just like anybody else. So I, I, I think the, at least in my mind, the important stuff is the changes, whether it's added money they need or money that we took away that they need to plead their case of why they can't do without that. Is there any other thoughts on that or how it should be done rather than every department? Well, I think that um, what we've done, we've done it a couple ways in the past, one where we combine with the select board and other ways where we just take it upon the finance and we meet as finance meet with the departments and then we will bring our recommendations to you. I would almost suggest that so that you don't have to go by line by line. But I think that to say whether we wanna do level fund, exactly level funded or level service, I think at this point right today, I would have too many questions um, about what's in the middle of what, what that entails um, per each line item. Um, like I said, it, it you know, um, some might be one and a half percent whole. Some might be the increase in hours. That's another discussion. Maybe it's something we need to meet in the middle. Um, I so there's some big factors involved. I mean, we don't. Um, that is a big tax increase. I want to see the money go back to stabilization, like we promised. We we do this over and over and over again, where we say we're going to put it back and we don't. Um, so there's a lot of factors here, but I don't necessarily know if it's one way or the other yet. I think you have to hear it out. I, I want to know, uh, Amy, what exactly every department absolutely has to have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hear what they have to do, submit to us, submit to you uh, what is absolutely necessary. You know, no fluff, no nothing. Let's just get to the bottom line this year because I think that's what we're going to have to work with. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, we have a little less than what, two months at this point until town meeting, something along those mm -hmm. lines. So, uh, you know, personally, I'd like to see a two and a half percent increase in taxes. I think the seven and a half is crazy. Um, I don't think people are going to go for that. But um, I, like Amy, like you said, I, I think we need to find some middle ground here and figure out what we need to do. So I'm okay with the department heads going in front of the, the finance committee and making those those cases to you guys. And then you guys can bring it back to us if you want to do that. Okay. Uh, we are meeting uh, next Wednesday. So next Wednesday where we'll uh, just double check, we'll be able to hopefully get the book and have the numbers, look at it 
and then we will set we can uh, next Wednesday set all the appointments up for the remainder to meet with each department. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, uh, David, man, uh, thanks for breaking the ice, you might say. But yes, I, I am definitely for level funding and two and a half percent right now. <clears throat> so we'll have to just uh, ask maybe we could do like a some kind of check in with the finance committee. And I don't have a calendar here in front of me of what all the dates are between now and town meeting and when we have to have everything due, but maybe we have some meeting in a, I don't know if a month is uh, at, at the beginning of April or something like that, where um, we kind of get a status check of where the finance committee is at. And then we can decide if we want to meet as a select board with any of the department heads to ask more questions. Do we, did we have a meeting scheduled on the 31st? Someone told me we did. Was it you? I don't know. <laughs> together at this point, you're lucky I show yes, up. Yes, you scheduled <laughs> one. Yes, you did schedule one. Okay, so then that's good. Then I, I think if uh, Amy, if you guys have a meeting Wednesday, next Wednesday, would you be able to so, someone pop in on our meeting? Um, oh, we're both next Wednesday. Is that what you're saying? We're not next Wednesday. We don't do two weeks in a row, dear. I'm sorry. Yes, the 31st would be our, our next meeting. And then meeting on the 24th. Okay. And then I can come to your meeting on the 31st as well and let you know um, what the appointments are and give you an update. Okay. That sounds good, everyone. Yep. Good. Are, are you going to be doing Zoom uh, meetings or in person meetings? I believe we've st we're still on Zoom. I'm not aware of any in person meetings yet. All right. Okay. Well, if it, any last uh, thoughts on the budget for this evening? All right. Well, thank you, Finance Committee. Thank you, uh, Dr. McKenzie and Ethan. And uh, I guess this will conclude our tri board portion for tonight's meeting. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to jump back to the consent agenda. We have uh, warrants PR2119. AP236, AP216S, AP2137, AP2137S, AP2137V, and we have a town collector employment agreement for Susan Glowatsky. So moved. Second. All right. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any other discussion? Just, uh, I was just going to have a question on, uh, kind of in relation to what we uh, were talking about in the budget, but Sue's uh, salary is in line with other salaries in the area and uh, seems equitable for the position. Uh, I guess I'm asking Carolyn if that was looked at when we chose that number. That was negotiated with her with before, so. It was. That was the number you guys have already, had already worked on previously, I think. Yes. Okay. That's just a number that I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. uh, 37 and a half hours a week instead of 35. And you'd still be in line when we, you know, give everybody in town the uh, COLA that would be coming. Yes. Yes. Everything okay otherwise, Susan? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just asking. I want to know from you. Yeah. Christian, did that? Good. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Christian, are you good with that? Yes. Yep. I'm good. Cool. All right. Uh, Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote. Sorry. <laughs> right. Roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. And Wiskevitz? Yes. Thank you. All right, next we have public comments. Uh, a maximum of 15 minutes, three minutes per person. If you're here for public comments, turn on your camera, wave at us. 
to get our attention. Anybody here for public comments? Last call? No? All right, we'll keep going. Uh, Carolyn, do you want to hit anything on an administrator update or do we pretty much budget, budget, budget? I don't. The only thing I need from you today at the select board is a uh, town meeting date. Um, Annie was very gracious and looked at what would work for the schools and it would be the 15th or the 22nd of May. Let me just double check. Yep, the 15th or the 22nd. I'd, um, if it doesn't matter, I'd like to go with the 22nd to give us some more time here rather than the 15th. I would argue if we're going to be outside, we should have the 15th with the 22nd as a rain date. Well, we can always go after the 22nd if we had to do another rain date, but I'm just concerned that we're already at the 17th of March. I mean, we're less than two weeks out or two, two weeks, two months out from having to finalize this budget. And I feel like there's a, a lot to go, a lot of work to be done, but. What does Carolyn feel? I, I mean, I would agree with David. It's a, a, always one more week is always great. Um, I know Annie's here, she may have left, but um, I, I, I think there's not a lot of activity. Uh, in June. So I think the following week I could put that on there as a rain date. The following week is Memorial Day weekend and we're going to have people screaming that they're free of COVID and they're going to want to go away and open up the summer house or get their boat in the water. I don't know. I'm just saying that that could be a potential problem. Well, yeah, I wouldn't want to do it on a holiday weekend like that. I think too many people are not going to be able to show up. So Right. What about the 22nd and the rain date of the 5th? Either way, we're going to have to set it up twice. I mean, we, we can't leave all the chairs and everything out there for a week anyways. I'll, I can check with her on the, um, for the June date. Is the 5th, the 5th, I'm not going to be around, so. Isn't that graduation? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, the first Friday of each, uh, of June. I think we've gone Graduation, graduation is on a Friday. How about the 12th then? What if we had it on Saturday the 22nd with Sunday the rain date? That, that's okay too. Yep. Yeah. That but sounds, we're having that sounds... it on Saturdays anyway. That's what we discussed at the last meeting. Rain we, were look, we were looking to book on a Saturday outside. Yeah, the 22nd is a Saturday. Okay. Yep. And the following Saturday is the Oh, late uh, Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. So we'll do Saturday with a rain date of Sunday. And then if we get rain both of those days, we'll figure it out from there. Okay. That sounds yeah. good. Yeah. What time? Noon? How about 10? Uh, I got, I'm doing something with the Mother's Club, either the 15th or the 22nd. I don't know. Excuse me, okay. David, did you see Annie's chat that graduation is, uh, I think it's Memorial Day weekend. Oh. So you could do it. I see it. But that, okay. that's usually a Friday night. Yeah. So, so we could do that then if uh, we could do the 22nd, rain date of the 23rd. And then if we had to, then we could do June 5th as, as the next rain date, the following Saturday. Um, or actually two Saturdays from then because graduation is the 28th, she said. Oh, and the rain date for that, the 28th is June 5th. So I guess we couldn't do that. <laughs> All right, so we'll just, we'll just plan on Saturday, Sunday, 22nd, 23rd, and hope for the best. Bring we'll our- get out and do our no rain dance. Yep. Yep. Don't do the 90 degree dance like you did last year. No. Okay. And what, what time are we gonna agree on? Uh. I don't care. I'm, I think I'm good. Start at 10, you're going to have people complaining about wanting lunch. So I think if yeah. you start at 12 or 12.30, we're better off. Yeah, 12.30, get the afternoon out of the way. We'll be out of there quick in the afternoon, hopefully. 
Fine with me. Either way, it's good. Could we? Could I get a motion to set those dates and the times? Just that way we can have it in set. Yeah, I'll make a motion for the twenty second uh, rain date, the twenty third. Start time will be noon time on either one of those days. Second. Okay, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any other discussion on those dates or times? Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. Thank you. Um, anything else, um, Carolyn, for your update? That is it. All right, sounds good. Um, let's move down to 6.1 COVID-19 update. I know that one of the uh, topics on here is the library reopening for browsing. And I think Allison's here, I'm assuming for that. And I thought I saw Patrick, yeah, Patrick's here as well. So yep, I'm here. you guys want to uh, talk a little bit about what you're, you'd like to do? Yes, please. Can you all hear me? You're pretty quiet, but that might be just on my end. Okay, I'll try to speak up. So we have a very simple proposal. We're looking to open uh, by appointment three days a week to begin. And as the situation progresses, we'll expand that to the full six days a week that we're normally open. Um, we're going to have five slots per hour, 30 minute slots. So people will be able to come in. We know that inevitably those slots will run over because you know we'll have to be getting people out. So we're gonna have each appointment starting at the top of the hour. Hopefully have them out with a few minutes to spare to you know reorient ourselves before the next group comes in. Um, and we're basically just gonna go from there. We're just gonna see how it goes and then tweak it as, as need be. Uh, we have um, you know the supplies that we need, hand sanitizer. We've got the barriers up at the service points. Um, and uh, you know we're going to require obviously that everyone be masked and maintain social distancing. Uh, we've already started to do as you know with your approval a couple of weeks ago. We started letting people in to use the meeting rooms. That's been going well. Uh, there's been some demand for that, so we feel like we can do this safely. The staff are on board. They're feeling you know confident that we can do this with minimal risk. Uh, the what I put forward here was uh, sent to the board of health. They gave a thumbs up to it. And um, we're going to hope to, it, this is tentatively set for Thursday, the 25th. We're going to do Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to begin with. We'd like to start on the 25th, but we're still having some outstanding issues waiting for um, certain shelving and furniture to be delivered. So that may push it back by a week because we still have stuff, some stuff in boxes and in storage. And we'd like to have everything out for people to come in and see the library more or less completed. So that may be a consideration, but it may just be a day or two, or it may be a week's delay. But I'm thinking somewhere between Thursday the 25th or Thursday, April 1st, that this would begin if the select board approves the plan. Okay. I have no problem with the plan, as long as the Board of Health has put their stamp on it and says that everything is... Uh, uh, part of the protocol, CDC, and distancing, and mask wearing, and doing all that you're you're going to do to uh, keep it safe. Mm -hmm. I don't have any problem with it. Right. Can I get a motion to approve that? I'll make a motion to uh, allow them to do their, as long as they have the approval and they have from the Board of Health. I'll second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any other discussion on the library uh, restarting browsing? Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin, Nevin Smith? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're right. really excited to have the public in. So this is a, it's a big day. Big day coming anyway. A great day. All right, thanks. Thank you, Patrick. You're welcome. Any other uh, quick updates on COVID-19 before we move on? Numbers are down. That's all we know, which is a good thing. So 
hospitalizations and things of that nature. Um, you know, I think all in all, I think we're all moving in the right direction. It's not over yet, but, um, you know, we are moving in the right direction. So I see a better future and the end of the tunnel coming at some point. All right, we'll move on to 6.2 solar RFP. Uh, this is for to put a solar array both on the senior center and the library. Um, and at this point, this is just to give permission for, to start working on the RFP and eventually release the RFP. This is not to vote on it or to spend the money yet. So before people start getting getting in an uproar. So um, Patrick or, or Allison, I don't know if you had wanted to say anything or Jane about this. Sure. Uh, so um, on the library side, we have uh, always hoped to have our solar array that was part of our original design. And um, just a reminder, the library is essentially powered entirely by electricity. So our goal was to put up the solar panels so that we would pay for uh, a lot of our own um, electricity. So we would be seeking um, an array anywhere between 67 and 82 kilowatt hours. And we have already have a few estimates, um, but some are out of date. So we have the funding. We have $280,000 unspent from our MBLC grant. We are also going to be receiving an extra grant for $100,000 since we did meet our LEED certification. So we know we have the money to afford this. And um, now that we have our certificate of occupancy and obviously we're opening up for people, uh, we are in a good position to, to do this work. And Jane, did you wanna chime in on the Senior Center? Um, the Senior Center still has $350,000 in our budget to do solar on the roof and it will end up saving the town about $84,000, so it's definitely worth doing. And it's a good time to go into it jointly or at the same time with the library because we may each get a better price if somebody's working both projects together. So is it basically gonna be two RFPs, but um, kind of sent out together? I think that's part of what's gotta be worked out in terms of, we certainly want to have separate metering on the buildings. Yeah, I mean, you prop, because of the budgets, you probably need one that, to be paid for by the senior center, one to be paid for by the library. But if we can get a I, better kind of bulk buy, then. I think Linda can figure out how to do that for us. But I, as we say, we just want to start putting together the RFP and get the qualifications down. And that will probably shake out while we're doing this. We did so, meet together with the um, representative from Northeast Solar and his recommendation was to go out at the same time because it would likely be that companies would bid on both with an eye towards offering a discount if we you know, chose them to do both projects. Now, so because now, money- The green money, will that be okay or no? Is it okay if we spend the great money on that? No, if you do it together, is that still something you're looking into? Or so it wouldn't. Uh, in in my opinion, this wouldn't be one project. This would be two separate projects, just going out to bid at the same time. Um, okay. Yeah, so we could still spend that great money. Good question, Joyce. You had something. Well, my thoughts were because there's money in the budget, we intend to spend down all the money that's in the budget for either senior center or library. Whether or not, and what's the life expectancy of the solar panels, um, expectancy of it where you place it on the roof, and how is that going to uh, make things better in the long run for the amount of time that the building is open? Is it really a savings to put that amount of money into each one of the buildings uh, just for the uh, electricity? And is it part of the water system also that goes into the building? I guess that that was be, would be my other um, thing, whether or not you'd have to have a holding separate holding tank for the uh, water. Um, this is in the hot water heating system. We're talking about hot water, we're talking about electricity. 
I know that, but what heats the hot water for those buildings? No, Hers it's not hot water. They're all electric. No, John, her question is what heats the hot water for the sink, for instance. And we Correct. do not have a solar heater on that. We have, it's, ours is done with oil. Oil, okay. Ours is electric. We have electric with some backup um, uh, propane, but we were designed to run all on electricity. So it would take care of our heating, our cooling, our power, et cetera. So, we, so even if the building wasn't open, obviously we'd be heating and cooling to some degree. So library, how much do you have left in your contingency budget? So we have currently 280,000 unspent plus uh, in, from a separate source, we have $100,000 coming uh, because we did get LEED certification. So we, that qualified us for an additional $100,000 from the state. Okay. okay. So th this will be uh, obviously something that we have to discuss as a board uh, when the RFPs come back, what the dollars and cents look like and what the potential savings are and uh, you know, the, the money on hand. But I don't have a problem with just putting, you know, working on the RFPs and, and seeing what the data shows. So, um, so if we could get a motion to release uh, the RFPs for the senior center and the library. Yeah, make a motion that the Hadley Public Library and Council on Aging can send out their request for proposals for the solar projects. I'll second. Okay, motion by Christian, second by Jane. Any other discussion on releasing these RFPs? Just what's the time frame? If you guys send it out, when are you putting it uh, to have it back, you think? I think part of the problem is right now with the budget, Carolyn and Jennifer are really busy and it may take a little while to get it going, but they can start working on parts of it. Okay. All right, Jennifer. Roll call vote Phil. Yes. Chungalo. Yes. Stanley. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Miskevitz. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's go down to 7.1 diversity committee, Mount Holyoke Gorse uh, Center closure. And I think I saw Amy here. There she is. All right. And you're muted. But uh, if, if you want to uh, just give us an update, and I, I guess there's, they just gave you a stay of ex execution here for the, the center. Hi, yes. Um, so as you said, David, we have a stay of execution um, of one year, although that is not ideal, obviously. Um, so the community is pushing back and trying to get a more substantive guarantee from the university that uh, they will come to the table to discuss with the community some options to keep the child care center open. Um, we actually expect a statement from the president today or tomorrow. Um, Currently, we have the support of some representatives, some regional representatives like Joe Comiford, Senator Joe Comiford and um, Representative Dan Carey, to mention a few. Um, but obviously, local support would be more meaningful because we are the communities that benefit from the child care center. Um, so one of the main issues and concerns that we have is you know, this area is fast becoming what we would call a child care desert, where there just are not enough options uh, for child care to satisfy the professional community that we have here. And the concern is that young working families like my family, like other families, um, would leave the area because there just are not enough options for childcare. Um, obviously that a mass exodus of young professionals is definitely not what we want for our communities. Um, so the hope is that the college will realize that 
they have a tax exempt status and they are nonprofit, but they also um, are here by invitation of these communities and the communities support the colleges. So we believe that um, Mount Holyoke College, among other institutions of higher learning, uh, have a responsibility to the communities to serve the public good. So that's kind of the the argument that the DEI has here, particularly in light of the fact that it's very clear that these types of closures affect women disproportionately, um, as evidenced by statistics that the Bureau, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, have um, released to the public regarding this pressing issue. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone has about the current status. So I guess from the select board perspective, um, would it make sense to send a letter of support for the center at this point, even though they're still trying to work it, work things out, I guess, for the, over the next year? It is uh, Representative Kerry and Senator Comerford um, sending letters of support or, or, you know, encouraging that the center be left open. I mean, what's the best path here? So we think that local support is particularly important because the argument that the college is using right now is that um, the closure of the center would not affect um, Mount Holyoke staff that much. It would mostly impact the community, which to me is not a good argument, obviously, as a community member. Um, that is their argument right now. I think it's important that the over 20 towns that are impacted by this um, show the college that the community is important and Mount Holyoke is a part of the community. And since this is one of the only resources that they do give back to the community that welcomes them and supports them, um, I think it's important that the college understands that there should be ideally a symbiotic relationship between the college and the community, not that the college takes everything from the community and gives nothing back. So that's kind of where we are right now. What about if the DEI wrote a, wrote a letter um, on, on behalf of the town uh, or on behalf of the select board, brought it back to us to approve and sign. Um, and then, you know, it could be just from Hadley, but maybe it could be a joint letter between Hadley and some surrounding towns and it may make support easier when you can just send it to surrounding select boards and just say, Hey, would you guys be willing to sign on to this as well before we send it over? I think that's an excellent idea. Um, I know that other community members that either live or work in other towns are working with their select boards right now. Hadley is actually on the forefront of this movement. Um, so other, uh, I know South Hadley, Granby, and I think there's one other one, but I can't remember, have actually asked to see language from our letter um, because they're looking uh, at their select boards at doing a similar thing. So if we wanted to do a joint action with other town select boards, I think that would be a really powerful statement as well. And I, I don't want to speak on behalf of the DEI committee, but I, I'm pretty sure I could say that they would be comfortable with, you know, turning this over to the select board and you would be welcome to, to use any language that we put in our original letter as well. Okay. Any other comments, thoughts, anybody else? Carolyn, does this uh, sound like a good way forward? All right, well, then I would say if you, oh, Carolyn. You, yes. You're sorry. good? Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, then um, I, I'm okay with that. Obviously, we don't have anything to vote on tonight, but I think if, if you wanted to um, finalize some language for, uh, for us, because we don't really have the. Uh, David, would you like me to just. Um, bring before the DEI the next time we meet, do you want, or I don't know if you want me to just send this directly, but do you want to just use our original letter and then take our signature off it and use it as a town of Hadley kind of thing? And then potentially, I know that um, 
I don't know when South Hadley meets, but I know that they are also considering a very similar level letter um, at their next meeting. I do. Do we want to reach out to them and ask them? I, I, I'm not sure how that goes, how we go about that with involving other towns. Yeah. Um, let's just uh, if, if we can for select board members, if we can review the, the letter for our next meeting and just make sure everybody's comfortable with the language on there and then we can vote on it next next meeting whether or not that's something we want to send forward on behalf of the town supporting the center and then um i guess amy the dei can work on getting other towns to sign on at that point i'll, I'll leave that up to you guys if, if you know making that case for them to join us if that sounds reasonable yeah that sounds great does anyone um would you guys like me to resend the the letter at this time, or you do you want to just look back to what we had submitted before? I would resend it if you could do the PDF. Sure, no problem. I think it should be slightly different than what you sent originally, and perhaps thinking of it as coming from the select board rather than from the DEI committee, just so it has a slightly different focus in how you word it. Would it be easier if I shared, I don't know, how you guys do this, shared an editable doc that you could make comments or suggestions on so that it would be more appropriate for your body um, to put forth to I think streamline I, it? I think that we all are sort of wanting you to write it and then we'll approve it. Is that fair to say? Sure. So I'll resend the original letter and then um, perhaps if you could um, respond with any corrections, changes, additions that you would like to make. That way we can just get the process done quickly, editing wise. Does just, that sound good? Yeah, let's just make sure we don't reply all on the changes. And yeah, I was gonna say, even Amy, if you want, I can, I can bounce ideas back and forth with you and then we can submit a final letter to the rest of the select board and DEI if you want, just to try to put it together. So if you just wanna start with me, that's fine. Thank you, Christian. I will yeah, I'll yeah. send you the copy. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Amy. All right. Any anything else on the Gorse Center? No. All right. We'll keep going. Uh, we have Mass DOT Route Nine, and uh, DOT is requesting the town of Hadley sign the land damage agreement and the right of entry agreement for the upcoming Route Nine project. Uh, these are standard forms for mass DOT projects and have been reviewed by council. Um, Carolyn, did we ever get an email on those, those few items that they had promised us confirming as far as um, you know, the bus stops, uh, the bus stop appearance, things like that? So not an official letter, but a conversation with them. I sent them the email and did talk um, with Richard Massey. I think it was Richard Massey and I don't have it in writing, but I did that get that assurance. Um, I, if you want me to get it in writing, I can do that. Yeah, These just, I think are standard. I think we have to sign. Okay. I don't know how much flexibility you're gonna have with that, but I, will, I can do that. If we can just get at least an email with those few items that they promised us, I think that would go a long way just because of the bad experience we've had with their promises, verbal promises of clearing sidewalks and, and things like that in the past that they said, oh, well, that's not what we meant after we said it. We'll do. Um, but if I could get a motion to uh, approve these documents or, or allow me to sign these documents on behalf of the select board, um, contingent upon an email confirmation of those items from DOT, that'd be great. So moved. And second, but I have a question. Do they need everybody to sign it? I thought there was a bunch of lines there. Do you know, uh, Caroline, do you know whether all of us need to or just just the uh, chairman? It's just the chair. Sorry, Caroline, I didn't mean to answer. Thank anything. you. I was looking, so thank you. Christian, you had a question? Yeah, is it just that one parcel out kind of near the Legion? Is that the only thing we're we're doing in this or is there more to it because there are two documents and one map so i was just didn't know if there were two parcels or that was this related to the one parcel you know 
the right of entry and the land damage, if you'll notice, the parcels match. So they're actually, it's the same parcel. Both are for the same parcel, therefore the same one map. Okay. Perfect. I, I think it's for that bus stop, isn't it? That's what I was guessing, but I don't know. It was highlighted when I read it, Christian. That's what it looked like to me. So. Okay. Any other comments on this before we vote? Yeah. All right, Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Stanley? I mean, Chungalo? Reluctantly, yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiscavitz? Yes. Thank you. All right. Moving on to 8.1, radio tower surplus equipment. This is under business not anticipated 48 hours in advance. Uh, Chief Specknable is asking that we re uh, declare a 60 foot radio tower that was replaced in 2014 as surplus equipment. Um, it's been, I guess, in storage since then, and uh, we no longer need it as a town. Yes, and he wants to donate it to the West Hampton uh, Fire Police Department. And uh, certainly, if we can help out with this mutual aid, I think that's a, a good thing for us instead of just letting it rust and not be any good we wouldn't get very much money for it anyway and i'm all about mutual aid anyway so i make a motion to approve this second okay. motion by joyce second by christian and chief did you want to say anything nope he's shaking his head no all right all right any other discussion we can't put this on top of mount holyoke to uh improve <laughs> our reception <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I know that's always an issue. <laughs> All right, Jennifer. Roll we'll call vote, Phil. Yes. Chunglo. Yes. Stanley. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Ms. Gavitz. Yes. Thank you. We'll keep moving along here. Uh, 8.2 annual town meeting warrant. And at this point, are we just opening? We've already opened the warrant, correct? This is the elections. Ah, all right. This is, this is to approve the warrant for the town election, correct? Yes, and I'll need signatures. All right. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any other discussion? No, Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chunglu? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Ms. Gavitz? Yes. Thank you. All right, and while we're on the topic of annual town meeting warrant, I would just like to put a placeholder for the police department for a parking, winter parking bylaw. Uh, you probably have seen the, so the signs on the town borders saying there's no parking between, what is it, November and April or whatever the dates are. Um, apparently that bylaw somehow got lost between hard copy records, the digital formats, and we can't actually find a record of the vote ever approving that bylaw. So we'd like to take the opportunity to actually add a winter parking ban bylaw so that way the police department doesn't have to put a parking ban out for every single winter storm that comes along uh, next year, like they did this year. So I just wanna put a placeholder for that and the, the police department will work on, work on those bylaws for parking. Awesome. So moved. Right. Second. Yeah, there's discussion on that. You still have the language from the last time we voted on this or not even? We don't even have any language. All we have left is the signs that are on the town the town lines, and that's about it. Is it? Did you check with Chris at DPW? Because I think that's where it all started from. Was down a highway. Yeah, we we looked uh, DPW. We looked um, asked David Nixon if he could find it in his records. Um, we don't know what happened. We don't even know when this was supposedly passed, but it could have been who knows thirty, forty years ago. So it's it's 
we need to fix it. So. All right. So when we fix it, are we going to start as if we didn't have one instead of trying to backtrack and say we're covering our asses? Okay. Oh yeah. No, we're gonna we're gonna do it right. Um, you know, surrounding towns all have similar bylaws on the books. So uh, they don't have to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, but we can do it the right way and make sure that we're fully compliant. So. Excellent. Jennifer. We'll call the Phil. Yes. Chungaloo. Yes. Stanley. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Again. Thank you. All right. Um, announcements for nine. 9.1 excise taxes are due April 1st, if you haven't paid those yet. And then under 9.2, I have Mother's Club Candidates Night is April 5th. And I don't have the details on that, but does anybody know if it's, I'm assuming it's by Zoom, just as if it was last year. Jennifer? It is. It's going to be on Zoom just like last year. Um, I would ask for the select board to uh, have a decision about who which member of the select board would be speaking to the uh, non-binding question. They're, they are allowing the select board to speak to that um, since there will be a non-binding question on the ballot. So can y'all think about that? See if anybody wants to just jump up and volunteer. It looks like Kristen, Christian's blinking a few times at me extra. Um, I would like to do it because I worked with uh, Jessica on it. Okay, well, Christian quit blinking so much then and Jane will be the one who speaks to it. And um, Jane, if I'll connect you with Denise Devine tomorrow. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't received anything in the mail yet as being a candidate. They um, just put the paperwork together. The flyer was just ready today, but it was just with, with, with today being moving day, I honestly just didn't get it loaded this afternoon when it came in. Okay. But it'll be on the town website, and Hadley Media and I are going to assist them in broadcasting again. Great. Thank you. Hey, Joyce. Yes? Uh, I believe you got another candidate uh, in our participation over there who maybe would like to say hi to everybody. Where is that? Amy Parsons. Amy, yep. Hi, hi everyone. everyone. You want to just, uh, we usually allow uh, a quick intro. You want to say hi and. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Put you Sorry, on the spot. Thanks, John. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Um, no, I ran last year and I'm running again and I'm looking forward to serving the town. Um, I don't know what else to say. Um, <laughs> I'm a local 13th generation farmer. So I grew up in Hadley, went to Hopkins. Um, been here most of my life. I was gone. I lived out west. I went to Kansas State University and then studied at Deakin University in Australia. And then I came back here um, the end of 2017. And I've been here since. Glad you decided to run again, Amy. Would really... uh, thanks. <laughs> Looking forward to working with you. Oh, me too. Great. All right. Thanks, Amy. And Joyce, do you want to give an intro? I'm sure everyone knows who you are at this point, but you got to have a chance too. Uh, what, what can I say? Uh, in my 18th year on the select board, 15 years on the school committee, uh, I'm one, I'm probably old. <laughs> so I, I guess I bring a lot of history with me um, from many years. So I hope I can contribute and still contribute to the future of our town. Okay. So and you're only 43 it, from the way I added those two numbers up, Joyce. Absolutely. You got that right, John. <laughs> All right. So that's it for the agenda tonight. We do have an executive session for North Hadley Village Hall. But before we do that, if is there any other announcements anyone would like to I, I, I did have uh, two announcements, please. Uh, we had um, two passings. Uh, one is a Fabustino Sato Soto Aguilaria, um, who lives in town. And unfortunately, he was driving a uh, truck and doing deliveries um, out of town. 
uh, and had an accident. So we certainly wish his family our sincere condolences at this time, which is extremely hard. We also have the passing of Clara Popchinski. Um, her son, Dennis, works for the town for many years in the sewer department. Um, and he also had also Clara has a daughter, San, um, Jane, who also lives here in town. Um, their grandchildren and her husband, Duff. So our condolences to uh, the Pichinsky family. I also made a mistake and I, I said that we uh, condolences to the Zagrodniks, uh, Joe. Um, but I also neglected to say that it was also Carl Swislowski's aunt that passed away, Marion Swislowski, a uh, Sagrodnik. So condolences to Carl's family um, and the Swislowski family. That's yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Do we so have a separate link for executive session? No, we're going to just stay on this one and I'm going to kick everybody else off. Thank you. All right. And At this, can I make a motion? Yeah, I have to go ahead, and then I have to read this statement. So, okay, uh, make a motion to go into executive session for the uh, negotiations of town property. Okay. And we will not convene in open session. Second. All right. Motion by Joyce. Second by Jane. Reconvene. Yeah. As the chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into executive session, and that I state that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley. And just a reminder, we will not reconvene. Um, Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. All right. Thank you. Good night, everybody. And John, if you could uh, kill the recording and the stream, please. <laughs>